it's Adult Learners Week. Is there something you've always wanted to learn? Computing, DIY, maths, English, or brush up on your skills generally? Every year, thousands of adults participate in learning opportunities across Scotland. If you want to find out what you can do or where you might start, then call the Adult Learners Week free phone number for free impartial advice. They can talk to you about education, training and employment. For further information, contact Learning Direct on 0800 100 900. One of their own fighting for his life. What I want to know is who stops the cop. One of their own with divided loyalties. I'm going to sign as your family liaison officer. One of their own telling white lies. I'm not thinking like a copper. The Bill, Tuesday at 8. That was my great escape. And coming up, we've got lots more. Real-life footage of the most amazing, emotional and bizarre incidents from all over the world. You won't believe your eyes. Join Martin Brundle in Great Escapes, Wednesday at 10.30. These goals shattered the European dream for Bayern Munich and Barcelona. Champions League glory continues, a Spanish fiesta in Paris. The first final between two clubs from the same country. Real Madrid and Valencia fight it out to be Europe's number one. The final of the Champions League, Wednesday at 7.30. Are you ready for a hot Parisian night? You're watching Grampian Television. Now over to ITN in London for the nightly news. First pictures of baby Leo as Prime Minister takes two weeks off. Get more money for the dome as the public stay away. Is this evidence of massacre of UN troops in Sierra Leone? And tributes to Sir John Gilgan, death of a theatrical giant. From ITN, the ITV Nightly News with Dermot Murnahan. Good evening. The first pictures of little Leo Blair were published today, taken by Mary McCartney, the daughter of Sir Paul McCartney. They show the baby, for the most part, fast asleep in the arms of one or other of his parents. One photo was released free of charge. Fourteen others are being sold to the media, the proceeds going to cancer charities. Tony Blair announced today that he is, after all, taking a fortnight off politics to spend it with his family. Lauren Taylor reports. These are the first official photographs of the new addition to the Blair family. They were taken yesterday and released today. The photographer was Mary McCartney, daughter of Sir Paul and his wife Linda, herself a photographer. Miss McCartney captured Mrs Blair looking relaxed and happy. The two women met during charity work. The series of pictures includes moments of real intimacy, especially between father and son. Leo was 38 hours old when the pictures were taken and slept through the whole session. Most of the touching images, including this one, were offered for sale for £500 each, with the proceeds going to two cancer charities. It's wonderful news and typical of Cherie that at a time when, it, which must be one of the happiest in any family's life, she's thinking of people who are at the most difficult time in their lives, families with children who have cancer. Mr Blair, who admitted being tired at the weekend, today announced a significant scaling back of his work. For the first time, he's taking time off while Parliament is sitting. He has cancelled his appearance at Prime Minister's Questions and the weekly Cabinet meeting. His deputy, John Prescott, will stand in for him. Although Downing Street is not officially calling it paternity leave, by deciding to cancel this week's engagements, the Prime Minister will now have nearly two weeks off with Cherie and the baby, because by chance, next week is a parliamentary holiday anyway. His colleagues, though, know how much work a new baby can be. I'm sure that uh, all of us uh, would wish uh, the Prime Minister uh, and his wife every congratulation. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and those of us who are of a certain age, Madam Speaker, only wish to say that uh, was, we're glad that it's him and not us. <laughs> By releasing selected photos, Downing Street has effectively kept control of the images, but publicists say the matter has been well handled. The critics of Tony and Cherie will be looking to say they're milking this, so they've got to be absolutely mm, sure um, that that doesn't appear to be the case. That way they have the public support, particularly if they're benefiting charities. 
Shoes, fantastic. And with blanket coverage in tomorrow's newspapers, it's a strategy that so far seems to have paid off. Lauren Taylor, ITN, Westminster. Well, over now to our political editor, John Sargent in Downing Street. So, John, the whole thing clearly being well choreographed. Yes, very well choreographed. You could argue about whether Leo should have been awake or asleep, but he certainly wasn't crying. Lots of photographs were taken. They chose the ones that they liked best. And, of course, those have got an eye very much to the public image of the Blairs. It's useful for a politician to look young. What's better for a man of 47 to have a new baby and to look relaxed with him and with the mother? So from the point of view of the Blair's political image, this is all to the good, and they know that that does affect the way the voters will look at them. And John, what about this paternity leave? Will Mr Blair be relinquishing the levers of power altogether for two weeks? He certainly won't do that. What's happened is they knew that this was the period when they should be careful about putting too much into his diary. So the diary was light anyway. There's the Whitson Parliament to recess next week. So it was just a question of getting through this week in terms of Prime Minister's questions, which he's not doing, and the weekly Cabinet meeting, which he's not chairing. But there have been boxes being taken up to the flat over across at number 11, the red boxes. Those are going up in much the same way. And if any crisis were to, were to hit the government, the Prime Minister would be very much back in charge. John, thanks a lot. The Millennium Dome at Greenwich was kept afloat today with another handout from the Millennium Commission. It's getting £29 million, that's nearly £10 million less than it asked for. The cash is coming from a national lottery fund set up to help small health and education projects. Nicholas Owen reports. Visitors leaving the Dome this evening. People who come like it, especially youngsters, but not nearly enough have been coming. Inside today, plenty of space to move around, but original estimates of ticket sales have been cut from 12 million this year to 7 million. The Millennium Commission says it had serious reservations about putting up more funds without substantial change in administration. Costs will be cut, opening hours reduced, management beefed up. The Dome's already received huge sums from the Millennium Commission, as well as the initial £449 million to build it, a top-up loan of £60 million was given just three months ago and now a grant of 29 million. Might the government rid itself of the dome, selling it off before the end of the year? We've always said that this exhibition would go on to the 31st of December in the year 2000, and that's our continuing intention. P.Y. Gerbeau, the French businessman whose chief executive, stresses that despite its problems, the dome's still the most popular pay-to-visit attraction in Britain. The Dome's operators have wanted an extra £38.6 million. In the end, they had to settle for the £29 million. Everyone involved in this place, especially the government and the Millennium Commission, have wanted to avoid putting in any more money. Without it, though, the whole future of the project, which has never lived up to the dreams of its creators, would have been in serious doubt. Nicholas Owen, ITN, at the Millennium Dome in Greenwich. Evidence pointing to a massacre of United Nations peacekeepers in Sierra Leone was discovered today. Up to a dozen mutilated bodies were found with UN insignia on their uniforms. Robert Moore reports now on the implications for the UN. Some of the pictures coming up are disturbing. Out on the battlefield in territory today captured by government forces lies the horrifying evidence of the massacre. The corpses are in UN uniforms. The fear is they are Zambian peacekeepers who were being held as hostages and were then killed as the rebels retreated. Their documents and UN emblems lie scattered around the bodies. But there is also confusion since some rebels are known to have worn stolen UN clothes. It's deeply disturbing um, to see that these men have been deliberately killed, whoever they are. Um, obviously the fact that they're wearing uniforms with UN emblems on them gives great cause for concern. The investigation will be no easy task. This is an area where fierce fighting has erupted over recent days. Government troops and loyal militias have launched attacks on rebel positions. Hundreds of UN peacekeepers remain hostages. Some, like these, have been released. But now it seems others who sought only to bring peace here have become victims of this brutal conflict. The UN is tonight launching an immediate investigation. If it's found that this was indeed a massacre of peacekeepers, it will profoundly shock a UN mission that was finally regaining some authority 
amid the battlefield chaos here. Robert Moore, ITN, Sierra Leone. The curtain came down on a theatrical era today with the announcement of Sir John Gielgud's death. He was 96. Sir John was the greatest of Shakespearean stage actors, but also starred in films, radio and television. He was working a few weeks ago. Here's ITN's Paul Davis. In the theatre that bears his name, the leading lady adding her tribute to the many since the death of Sir John Gielgud was announced earlier today. The world lost one of Britain's greatest actors, Sir John Gielgud, who brought so much inspiration and pleasure to so many people. Sir John Gielgud was a true giant of the stage. He graced its boards for three quarters of a century. Traditionalists will best remember his love affair with Shakespeare, from this early portrayal of Romeo to his famous rendition of Hamlet, widely acknowledged as the best of its age. Where be your jibes now? Your gambles, your songs, your fleshes of merriment that were want to set the table on a roar. Gielgud played practically every Shakespearean role. With his fellow knights Ralph Richardson and Laurence Olivier, he dominated the post-war English stage. His willingness to adapt to the very different world of Hollywood and movie making won over a new audience. Here he played Dudley Moore's butler Hobson in the film about a playboy millionaire. It won Gielgud an unexpected Oscar. You feel unloved, Arthur. Welcome to the world. Everyone is unloved. Now stop feeling sorry for yourself and incidentally I love you. Those who worked with him say his was a unique talent. The greatest age, I think, in British theatre for many, many years was the time when Richardson, Olivier, Gielgud, Redgrave and Guinness played in the theatre. And Gielgud was the leader of that in the theatre. Sir John Gielgud died peacefully at his home in Buckinghamshire yesterday. Sir John Gielgud, whose death was announced today. The Mayor of London, Ken Livingston, tonight told a city audience that London couldn't remain the financial capital of Europe if Britain stayed out of the Euro. Speaking at a banquet hosted by the Lord Mayor, Mr Livingston said he planned to use his time in office to explain how vital the Euro was to London's medium and long-term interests. The Israeli withdrawal from southern Lebanon precipitated fighting and panic today as Islamic Hezbollah guerrillas poured in to take the territory abandoned by the Israelis. Israel's old ally, the South Lebanon army, similarly abandoned, was fleeing. John Irvine reports. The residents of northern Israel will spend tonight in bomb shelters. These people are now within easy reach of Hezbollah's rockets. The Islamic guerrillas and their supporters have spent the day moving into what was the South Lebanese security zone, the buffer that Israel is now leaving after a 22-year occupation. But as they move out, the Israelis have been trying to stem what they regard as a threatening Hezbollah advance. Two civilians have been killed in this rearguard action and fearing retaliation from Hezbollah, the Israeli Prime Minister has warned he may be prepared to turn his tanks around again and send them back into Lebanon. The IDF will deploy itself within the security zone in a way that will ensure uh, the defense of the, our uh, settlements and uh, border. The Israeli cabinet has been meeting in emergency session tonight to consider what to do next. This is a crisis for Israel because units of this country's sworn enemy, Hezbollah, are now less than two miles from the northern border. John Irvine, ITN, Jerusalem. The white former boyfriend of the black British athlete, Asher Hansen, appeared in court today. Chris Cotter is charged with perverting the course of justice and conspiracy to defraud. He's accused of sending racist hate mail to Miss Hansen, an Olympic triple jumper, to back up his claim that he'd been attacked by racists. The England football squad got together today to start preparing for Euro 2000 next month. There are friendlies against Brazil and Ukraine first, and they'll help Kevin Keegan decide on his final 22 players. Our sports correspondent Graham Miller reports. No rest for the England squad at the end of the season. Euro 2000 awaits them. Kevin Keegan has until June the 1st to sort out his 22 names for Holland and Belgium. He already knows 18, he says. The two friendlies against Brazil on Saturday and the Ukraine on Wednesday week, both at Wembley, will determine the others. Robbie Fowler of Liverpool is fit again after his ankle operation, but short of match fitness. 
And Michael Owen, his teammate, is concerned that his hamstring problem may let him down again. But Keegan's optimistic for both of them. Michael Owen, there's absolutely no doubt about. Um, he's fit, he's raring to go. Um, with Robbie, it's going to be a little bit more, more difficult to assess because, you know, we haven't really got a lot of matches left. But I want to have a look at him and I want to make that decision and I won't be scared to make that decision to take him if I think it's right. So Euro 2000 starts here for Kevin Keegan and his England squad. He's got 10 days to whittle the party down to a final 22 and he's hoping his hand isn't influenced too much by injuries. Meanwhile, Brazil, who face England on Saturday, have now arrived in Cardiff, where they have a friendly against Wales at the Millennium Stadium tomorrow night. Graham Miller, ITN Sport. Fourteen members of the royal family today visited the Chelsea Flower Show, which opens to members tomorrow and the public on Thursday. The Queen was given a tour of the show's best blooms and gardens, which are expected to attract 170,000 visitors. Princess Margaret was also in the royal party, as was the Countess of Wessex. The headlines again as the first pictures of Leo Blair were published. The Prime Minister said that he would, after all, be taking time off politics to spend it with his family. The Millennium Dome at Greenwich is getting another £29 million from the National Lottery to keep it afloat. And the actor Sir John Gielgud has died at the age of 96. Some nice financial figures. The FTSE 100 index was down nearly 10 points at the end of a roller coaster day, which saw more falls in high tech stocks but gains in oil and banking. In New York, the Dow Jones closed 84 points lower and the pound gained nearly half a cent against the dollar. Now time to see how the papers are covering the Blair baby pictures. And the front pages are of course dominated by Leo Blair. The Daily Express shows him with his delighted parents and the headline, Pride and Joy. The Telegraph says Leo Blair takes a firm grip on power as the Prime Minister skips cabinet to be with him. Times says Mr Blair is putting Leo first and leaving John Prescott in charge. It also reports that the Microsoft boss, Bill Gates, is to spend £130 million on scholarships to attract the brightest students to Cambridge. At the bottom of the mirror's picture of Leo is a caption simply saying, Ah, oh, and the Sun echoes one of its most famous headlines, predicting the outcome of the next election and saying Tony Blair's popularity is soaring. And that's the news tonight. I'll be here again tomorrow at 11. Do join me then for now from the ITV Nightly News team. Good night. Absolutely no sign of the weather settling down in the next few days. Take this evening, for example, wet and windy weather sweeping across the country. Heavy bursts of rain, especially in the north and the west. Very light and patchy.